Today, we're going to be discussing the six ways that Rise of Kingdoms has been able to build a massively appealing and extremely addictive mobile game. Now, before we jump into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Mech Arena. Mech Arena is a free, quick fire, competitive robot game with explosive PvP team battles, deep combat tactics, and limitless customization. In Mech Arena, you can play custom matches against your friends or get them in a team to take down players from around the world in live 5v5 and 2v2 matches. Just select a war robot from dozens of options, equip it with the perfect weapon loadout, and take on all comers in the arena. Then, customize the looks and performance of your bots as you rise up the divisions to reach the top. Players in Mech Arena have already destroyed over half a billion mechs on the battlefield, which not only enters them to win some awesome prizes, but also has raised over $50,000 for Able Gamers, halfway to the grand total of 100000 Able Gamers is a charity that has a mission to combat social isolation and improve the quality of life of people with disabilities. Over 15 years, they've worked to craft a more accessible gaming industry by helping developers better accommodate their games for players with disabilities. So download Mech Arena today and join the Mechs Are Here event to help the community destroy 1 billion mechs for a great cause. Huge shout out to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. You can download the game for free. Link will be in the description. So what are you waiting for boys? The Mechs Are Here, let's go. So at the core of any addictive game is a satisfying gameplay loop. What this is, is essentially what you're doing every time you go to play the game. Rise of Kingdoms is a city builder game, a PVP war game, and also a collecting game. So the core gameplay loop is collecting enough resources to upgrade your city, train troops, defeat barbarians, and ultimately defeat other players in war. All the while collecting a ton of really awesome historical figures that you might've already heard of in history class or in ancient stories what's important about this gameplay loop is that it's simple and easy to understand anybody who downloads and starts rise of kingdoms is able to complete every task that the game throws at them even if you're a young kid you understand the concept of attacking a barbarian this is the bad guy and you're the good guy collecting resources both on the map is quick simple easy to understand and you also get a guaranteed source of resources that are constantly being pumped out in your city. But simple and satisfying gameplay isn't enough. It has to be a repeatable activity that forces you to come back over and over and over again. This is to prevent players from getting bored. If you go out and you defeat barbarians 5,000 times in a row, then eventually you're gonna get bored of that activity and you're just gonna log off. But with the AP system, you can only defeat a certain number of barbarians before you're forced to either collect more items to do that, or you simply run out and then you have to leave and come back when this AP bar is finished a completely arbitrary implementation they didn't need to include the ap point system but they did so that way you're forced to stop doing it at some point that's also why resource nodes have a limited amount of reserves if you could just send your troops to an infinite cordon field and then when you log back in again you can recall them and they get a ton of resources all at once sort of like the alliance pit that wouldn't force you to log back in but if you log off and you know that your resource gatherers are going to come back after an hour now you have an incentive to return to the game to send them out again that's also why there's an arbitrary cap on the amount of resources that can be produced in your city why would it just stop at a random point it's that way you the player realize that you have to log back in otherwise you're losing value over time if you really think about it you can find tons of ways that this game is limited for no other reason than to provide the player with a reason to come back why do i have to wait for soroli crisis to come back it's a game mode that the developers have implemented why can't i just play it whenever i want why is there a limit on the number of times i can play sunset canyon i'm just fighting other players it's not like they're losing anything when i do that maybe a couple of slots here on the leaderboard all of these artificial limitations on the game are so that way you have to stop playing at some point so you don't get bored and then come back when you have the opportunity to play again okay so rise of kingdoms has a simple and easy to understand gameplay loop that is relatively satisfying and also leaves you wanting more because it's constantly stopping you from playing but that's not enough if the game itself isn't satisfying to look at or listen to or to interact with there are a ton of games that are trying to rip off rise of kingdoms but the problem is that the art style just isn't up to par either it's a low quality image or 
the actual style itself isn't cartoony enough maybe it's too realistic or maybe just the characters in the game are ugly but rise of kingdoms has a very unique art style that is extremely appealing not only to players who want a little bit of realism but also don't mind if it's a little bit cartoony as well that's also why the developers of rise of kingdoms went out of their way to hire christopher tin a grammy award winning composer to make the music that is in rise of kingdoms for a game like rise of kingdoms a good soundtrack is one that seamlessly blends in with the theme and into the background and one that you don't mind listening to on repeat but i can assure you if the music in this game were horrible or if they didn't include music at all you would notice it immediately something would feel like it's missing and think about it from a gameplay perspective there's no reason to have music in rise of kingdoms you just don't need it but they implemented it for your pleasure and for the immersion and what's equally important to the design of the art and of the music is the user interface and how the user interacts with the game now when i say user interface i mean all these little buttons on the bottom and in the corners and a good user interface is one that you the player don't even think about but imagine if you tapped on these buttons and it took a long time to load the different portions of your inventory each of these buttons doesn't have to have its own dedicated picture but it does because it's easy to understand and everything is extremely fluid and very responsive and again that's important if a game is clunky and slow to move around the different menus or if you the player don't know exactly where everything is located when you need to get there you might just get frustrated you might not want to learn how to interact with the game and you just log off before you even get to enjoy the gameplay so from the ground up the art style from the designs of the characters to the music to the user interface has all been made to seamlessly complement that addictive gameplay loop that is rise of kingdoms but what's a good gameplay loop without some really good rewards to supplement the gameplay rise of kingdoms includes a ton of different goals and objectives and rewards the player for reaching those different milestones on a micro level it could just be these daily objectives just do a couple of things in the game and you get a little chest and it may not be much but it is a way to reinforce that behavior and get you to do it again the next day especially when the reward for completing these objectives is gems the premium currency or golden and crystal keys which can get you some really good rewards such as commanders equipment etc and the key no pun intended to the reward system working is that the rewards are always randomized rise of kingdoms along with virtually every other game that's released these days uses what's called the skinner box positive reinforcement system you see when you get a reward for a particular behavior whether it's completing daily objectives in rise of kingdoms or working out at the gym your brain rewards you with a little bit of dopamine your brain releases some feel-good chemicals that basically say hey you should do that again but what skinner's research taught us is that if the reward is randomized when you do get that reward you get much more dopamine this is literally why casinos are addicting because players can spin the roulette wheel and they may miss 20 times in a row but that one hit is huge and that's what gets players hooked think about it this way every single day you log in you can claim three ethelflaed sculptures how exciting is it to get three Ethel Flood sculptures as opposed to three Charles Martel sculptures being dropped from a golden chest? Now, you could argue that one is slightly more valuable than the other, but in the early game, both of these commanders are extremely viable and extremely usable, and yet you would get way more excited over three Martel sculptures than three Ethel Flood. And that's because that reward is randomized, whereas with Ethel Flood, you're guaranteed to get it every single day. It's not that exciting. And this randomized reward structure isn't just in the tavern, it's literally everywhere in rise of kingdoms the mysterious merchant has a bunch of items for sale and you guessed it these items show up relatively randomly these equipment material chests have a random piece of material in them why do these exist why can't they just be the pick one material chests how about event reward chests or equipment blueprint chests there's the legendary tavern event there's the wheel of fortune event there's the golden egg event there's the treasure hunter event as well and even the drops from barbarians is somewhat randomized the drops from forts how about the drops from marauders even the events that matter the least still drop a supply box which has a randomized reward think about it virtually every reward in rise of kingdoms is randomized literally everything that you're doing is essentially spinning a roulette wheel randomized rewards are baked into the very fabric of rise of kingdoms across the entire game from the moment you start playing 
for infinity now positive reinforcement in rise of kingdoms isn't just relying on randomized rewards although that is definitely the primary driver that keeps players engaged but there's also achievements and progression systems that are built into the game as well you are constantly reminded of your power level as a player and in the beginning of the game it's satisfying to watch this power number grow and comparing yourself to other players when you see a player with 50 million power and you just started that's exciting because you think okay i can actually get there one day the game also keeps track of your kill points you get to see how many players how many troops have you killed and watching that number grow is satisfying i mean they even have a straight up achievement system which is just a way to keep you engaged and see your progress over time and the rest is as they say history the gameplay loop is simple easy to understand it's satisfying it keeps you coming back and the rewards are randomized so you feel good when you get something good and you can also see your progress over time but that's not it you see it goes a little bit deeper than that because virtually everything that we just described is also pretty much just a slot machine that is to say that everything we've discussed so far isn't specifically why rise of kingdoms is popular it's why the strategies it's using are successful the difference between rise of kingdoms and a slot machine is that rise of kingdoms is actually much more appealing to a broader audience for example a little kid is probably more excited about killing barbarians on a battlefield than they they are just pressing a virtual slot machine button over and over and over again and not getting really anything out of it other than flashing lights so rise of kingdoms had to design their game around the four different types of players and we've talked about this in a previous video where i talked about the deceptive ways that rise of kingdoms gets you to spend money but essentially for a game to be massively appealing it has to appeal to these four types of players and these are known as bartle types some players are killers others are achievers while you also have socializers and explorers players who are classified as killers are motivated by the pvp aspect they want to get a ton of kills they want to crush the competition and they want to rise to the top of the leaderboard whatever that leaderboard might be rise of kingdoms appeals to these players extremely well with not only the fighting aspect in the early game but also the kvk system arc of osiris and osiris league are extremely good examples of this and of course these players can track their power and kills over time which is extremely satisfying for the socializers rise of kingdoms promises a massive network of players that you can plug into and make friends with this is why they have the alliance system and this is why they have the coalition system and different teams in Arco Osiris versus other teams this is also why there's a chat box for every single game mode every single event you go into whether it's Soroli whether it's Lost Kingdom chat there's always a chat box there for you to interact with the other players in the game this is also why you get gifts when your Alliance members do things whether it's defeating barbarian forts or making a purchase in the game rise of kingdoms makes you feel like you're part of a community of other players whereas if you play a game like Call of Duty sure you can spawn in but you're not forced to talk to anybody and you're put on a team randomly every single time you can play Call of Duty multiplayer and feel like you're just shooting other bots there's really no distinction other than maybe skill level and the fact that they act like humans but rise of kingdoms actively encourages you to interact with other players part of the tutorial is to join an alliance they want you to play with other people and feel like you're part of that group for those of you who are achievers there's different statuses that you can achieve here in rise of kingdoms you can progress your account to city hall 25 and feel like you've achieved that particular milestone you can achieve the ultimate goal of getting tier five units having the strongest troops that your city can possibly produce and put simply you have your power level you can achieve a really high power level or you can achieve all the different goals that they set for you here in the achievement system you also have events like zenith of power where you can achieve the number one and be the most powerful on your continent or you can achieve king status and be the king of your kingdom there's plenty of accomplishments to be made here in rise of kingdoms so if that's what you're into then this game will deliver and finally there's the explorers there's those that want to explore this world and see what the game is all about find all the different barbarian keeps and camps and defeat barbarian forts but not only that you can explore and experience the skills and the power of all these different commanders in the game there's over 70 commanders in this game at this point a wide variety of well-known characters to collect is an extremely addictive way of getting certain players into your game think about pokemon pokemon was literally built on the back of gotta catch them all and that is the most valuable video game franchise in the entire world so needless to say not only is rise of kingdoms simple to play and extremely addictive but there's something here 
for everyone which makes it way more appealing than just your standard slot machine but then there's the final question and that is what keeps players coming back when they're totally dissatisfied with the game when they completely are sick of that gameplay loop when they feel like the very developers just don't care about them as a player when they think that the new update is worse than the last update and that last update was far worse than the one that came out a few months ago my friends i would like to introduce you to the sunk cost fallacy players will continue to engage in an activity or even a relationship if they feel like they've already invested so much i mean not to get too deep but this is also why some people stay in relationships even if they're not happy they just feel like they've already spent two years with this person and even though they're not happy they just want to stay because they've always stayed but the reality is that investment is already gone the amount of money you've spent on rise of kingdoms is gone you can't get that money back no matter how much you play but if breaking the sunk cost fallacy was that easy then players would be quitting based on just this video alone i mean hey you're aware of it now does that mean you're gonna quit probably not myself included and wouldn't you know rise of kingdoms knows this getting players to that sunk cost fallacy as fast as possible is an extremely useful way of getting them to stay invested one of the primary ways is that rise of kingdoms and virtually all mobile and even modern console games do this is by implementing an in-game currency system that is ubiquitous the implementation of gems as a premium currency is just a psychological way to separate you from the amount of money that you're spending i mean think about it why is one dollar 200 gems but a hundred dollars is twenty five thousand gems it would make sense if one dollar was one gem or even one dollar was 10 gems but there's not an easily understandable way to link the amount of money you're spending with the amount of gems that you have there's it's sort of a blurred line i mean think about it if i want to participate in the legendary tavern here and i need a key right well i have to get a key from somewhere and i can get that from gems but why do i have to spend 600 gems on a key why can't i just spend the dollar equivalent of 600 gems why do we need gems in the first place why can't we say a sovereign key is worth two dollars why doesn't this button here say one key or two dollars why does it have to be converted first into gems well since the gem to dollar conversion isn't exactly clear it makes it harder for you the player to realize how much money you're actually spending when you're spending gems and not only that but gems are purchased in bulk you can't just buy a specific number of gems let's say i want 9500 gems i can't just buy 9500 gems i have to buy some number of gems from a pack whether it's a bundle or directly in the gem store and because this is purchased in bulk you're gonna have to purchase more than you actually need which means you're going to be left over with some gems that eventually you're not going to have anything to spend it on if you want to spend it on the wheel but you don't have enough gems to spin the wheel even once well then you're in a position where you have to either wait to get more gems in which case that wheel event is probably gone because again we've talked about events being limited time or you're going to have to spend more gems at a later date to compensate for the fact that the gems that were left over last time aren't enough to do anything with now and you feel like if you just have you know 150 gems sitting up here in the top corner you're, you're gonna feel like you're just kind of wasting it right if you don't use them then they're not doing anything so you're always left with needing just a little bit more and that again encourages spending and then of course the more you spend the better the value so you're actually encouraged to have a surplus of gems and we could go down the rabbit hole of all the other ways that rise of kingdoms encourages you to spend money but i've already made an extremely long video an extremely detailed video talking about that and i encourage you to check it out if you're interested all of the other tactics that rise of kingdoms uses to get you to spend and that's it we've talked about why rise of kingdoms is satisfying why it's addicting and why players continue to play even after they've been dissatisfied if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace